So everything we're doing is trying to input the same data over and over again in a fashion so that when we go to our gun to get it out, we get the result we want, which is presenting the sight or the muzzle to whatever needs holes in it. Got it? Got it. Be it where that steel is or if somebody's three feet away from you, because we'll work this weekend. You guys are gonna work with Paul and Z touching each other, hands on, tight. And if you needed to have to deal with that, we want your gun and your ability to get that gun out, that shouldn't change. You should still be able to do the same thing. Don't get lax in any of this. If we say go to, get, go to your gun or get a master grip, don't just be like. That's not the result we want. Who knows what a master grip is? Who does not know what a master grip is? Raise your hand if you do not know that term. There's a few of you. Master grip is how you interface with the gun. That's it. It's just a term for saying how you interface with the gun. Be it a full-size pistol, this is completely inert, so I'm gonna point it wherever. Don't get weird, it's not an NRA class. <laughs> be it a, a gun this big or the littlest, tiniest little pistol, that's the way you interface with it. This will apply to most semi-automatic guns. Nobody's shooting a revolver here, right? The way that we interface with the pistol happens in the holster, be it an open holster like this or in the appendix position. If your appendix or inside the waistband holster is, is set up that your gun is so close to your belt line, like I now have this, that you cannot get your fingers between the grip and your belt line, I would adjust that. So there's always a trade-off between concealability and access. So who's got an inside the waistband holster? Let me see it. Just lift your shirt up. So like Dan's is close, yours is, is that in a holster? It, yours, Jesse? yeah. Jesse's? Yeah. Jesse? So like Jesse, come here. Yeah. Come on, Jesse. Come on, Jesse. Show everybody your gun. Yeah. It's, not a, it's not, I'm not digging on you, I just wanna, so there's a trade off here. So see, he can't get, can't get your finger between that? Yes, is it okay to touch you? Yeah, I, should have, I should have first asked permission. No, it's all good. Okay, okay. Are, you, are you nervous right now? I'm, I'm in front of 50 people. Imagine that they're all naked. <laughs> For real. Okay, fair For enough. For real. I am. Your dad's like, you better not be. Better not be imagining them all naked. You can put your shirts down. So just food for thought. If your finger can't get between there, I can't form a master grip. So look, for me to get this out, I kind of have to fight it up to get my fingers between there. We have touch points. If you golf, or the best way to think about this is when you ate a little bit ago, you picked a fork up. This is the best way that I can relay this to people. You learn to eat as a kid, and every time you pick a fork up, even though it was a shitty plastic fork, you still held that fork the same way you would a $100 piece of fine silver, right? If one of us walked up to you and manipulated that fork in your hand slightly, you know, you're gonna eat like so, however you hold the fork. If I took and moved it like this, you would immediately go right back to how your brain has programmed to hold the fork, agree or disagree? Agree. So you have a master grip, you could say, for your fork, right? A pen's the same way, however you write. If I moved that pen a little bit, you would take it right back to however you hold the pen. You ever see somebody that holds a pen or a fork like weird, and you're like, what is wrong with him or her? Right, and you're just like very judgmental about the way they hold a fork. Isn't that weird that we're judgmental about such a stupid thing? So same thing, you're, even if you've got good skills, we can make it better. So what's the master grip supposed to do? Paul's gonna do a block of instruction on recoil mitigation. I always bust his nuts, it ends in this, hold the gun like a man. We wanna be high and tight on the gun. So the one lefty, Brian, there you go, it looks like that. For the rest of you, it looks like this. My middle finger, if you notice that finger's kind of uh, a little thicker, my pleasure knuckle is a little thicker than the left one. If you wanna see them up close, you're more than welcome to meet me later. It's thicker because there's a big callus here from it slamming into the trigger guard a million times. That's a touch point. I don't wanna draw this gun out with space here because when the gun comes out, I want it in the position that I wanna use it from. If Z is trying to kill me in the dark alley, I don't wanna draw my gun out and be like, oh, I got a shit grip, and he rips this gun out of my hand. I need my hands high and tight on it. So as I form that grip, I'm tight to the trigger guard, and I'm tight into the beaver tail. I don't care how big your gun is, if you've got a little 
365 or a little, uh, a little uh, one of you guys had a little Ruger. High into that beaver tail, even get a little chunk of meat and you're tight here. That's that master grip. As I manipulate this gun, if I'm gonna load or unload, that grip doesn't really change. I may need to slightly alter the angle of the gun in my hand to push the magazine release, depending on the size of my hand. So some people, as we do this, are like, I can't push the button. We'll move the gun a little bit. All of this is happening while I dominate the muzzle. We're gonna work on draw stroke. The reason I'm telling you about grip is that that starts here or here. We don't wanna develop a draw stroke and not develop that master grip simultaneously. Understand? So come up real quick. We'll form like a V around me. I'll come right here. Speed comes through efficiency, not just through raw movement. So if I can make things efficient, for example, my support hand can come to the center line of my body as my strong hand or dominant hand goes to the gun. So I'm high and tight, right? I've connected to the gun. I can come up and out of the holster and as I present that gun to the target, I'm gonna connect my hands. Some people describe this as a karate chopping motion. Wah, wah, wah. And from anywhere in this draw stroke, I can start shooting from right here. I can shoot you in the feet, the knees, the dick, the pelvis. I could light all these targets up from right here with this hand hanging on my, my belt loop. So I'm good to go from here because I've got a strong grip. If you try to take this from me, I can retract this gun in and shoot from here, right? I can do all kinds of stuff because I built the platform where this gun is locked into me from here. When I join my hands together, nothing's changing here. If I need to manipulate this gun, nothing's really happening that's changing. If I need to load this gun, I've got a live round in this gun. Look, seat lock tug, cycle. What might I want to do now? I'm going to press check. I'm going to decock. I'm going to thumb check. And I'm going to holster. I'm going to draw this gun again. I'm going to bring this gun out. I need to unload it. I'm going to remove the source of ammunition. I'm going to store it on my body. Cycle, cycle. I watch that round fall out visually and if needed physically inspect the chamber. I do not need to stick my finger in there when I watch the round fall out. I'm not going to just do things to do things. I will cycle this a couple times regardless. I can see that's empty. Slide forward for me, hammer down for me because I've got a hammer. I'm gonna thumb check that slide and I'm gonna visually inspect that my finger is high off the trigger. My finger's off the trigger. I'm gonna have you guys say it and I'm gonna look my gun into the holster. I'm gonna look my gun into the holster. Again, present the pistol. For me, lock the slide to the rear because not every gun has a slide locking mechanism. I'm going to in seat, lock and tug. Lock, tug. I just knocked that slide forward by slamming it that hard. What might I want to do? I don't want to see you guys putting your hands in front of your muzzle. Was, as soon as people started putting forward serrations on guns, you know, old 1911 days, you press checked. This is what, where press checking came from. You put your finger out on the front of the, of the bushing. We're not doing that. If you got forward serrations, make a clamp like so, like a lobster claw and just lobster claw onto your slide to press check. But Mickey, I watched the round go in. Why would I press check? Well, that's a really good question because we're developing systems that are repeatable no matter what. So if I always know there's a round in the chamber, always, I know there's one in the chamber. If you are gonna build a system that has a half of 1% margin for failure or 10th of 1% margin for failure, is that acceptable in this setting? I don't think so. So why would you not in this setting when you're doing an administrative process make, not make sure the gun's completely loaded? Is there any reason? Does anybody have a problem press checking their gun? No. If you don't want to, I could give two flying shits because I'm not going to be there to protect you or your family. I'm just telling you it makes good sense. Did you guys press check in SF? I did. Did you learn to press check at the PD? No. No? Started on revolver. Did you press check in the marshals? Always. Where's Jeff? Right here. Did you press check in your unit? Yeah, absolutely. Ben. Did you guys in the JTACs press check? Yeah. Yeah? Paul, did you guys on your SWAT team press check? Yes, sir. 
Chuck, did you guys press check? Yeah. I, I purposely went around the table so you guys understood that we press check guns. That does not mean that you, now, now I know my gun is unloaded right now, right? But if I was to load it, I don't need to walk around and be like, shit, did I load this thing? No, because my process, because I'm from Britain right now, my process is that it goes in the holster that way. So it's not, shit, did I load it? What were you going to say? I was going to remind we... you about double and single action, guys, holstering, making okay. it single action. Who's I'm got a single play. action? I know Doc does. I think you do. You do? I got a single double. Single double. Who's got a single action, like a 1911 or a 2011? Those are going on safe. I was just not seeing what your gun was. I just wanted you to decock it until we could talk. Thank you. You're awesome. And it's squib loaded. I don't know if anybody had a squib. Good. That's a good point. Double actions. Is anybody shooting one of these like mine, like a SIG or a, a, a Beretta? Decock the guns. Decock the guns if you've got the, the double action, and if you're on a single, you go to safe. That's part of your process. Understand? Yeah. Everybody else is shooting striker guns. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go even in odds. You guys that are behind them, whichever line we start with, is going to watch. You're going to pick the one person that's to your... So if we start with odds, one and two. So two will be watching one. Got it? Four will be watching three, etc. You guys will just kind of pair up, and you're going to just see, are they being efficient? How can they streamline things? You ever watch somebody draw, and they'll like do stuff like this? Like, I just hear my knees just crack. You know, that's not efficient. What really has to move? I mean, just shoulders and elbows, right? This is it. We joke, but if you took everything that we were doing here and like. Drew CG'd the guns out of our hands, or however you do that. Drew knows how to do those things. I do not. Oh, this is all you'd see. This is like us all weekend. It'd just be this with nothing in your hands. I mean, there's really not anything else happening. You can shoot one-handed like this. You don't need any special shit happening below your core. So we're just looking for efficiency. A couple of you, I already said, your hands had gone near your muzzles. There is no draw stroke, there is no reholster process that requires you to point a gun at yourself. There is nothing that we're doing this weekend that requires the muzzle to be orientated at human flesh. Unless a horde of bad guys comes over the hill, we couldn't hire them this year, so there will be no live fire testing. Everybody's gonna have eyes and ears on. We're gonna just look at some simple draw strokes. I'm gonna grab my whistle out of the bag. Kane, would you grab my whistle? Yep. Should be in the top of my bag. Whistle. We'll just start out with the command of up, of up. What we're looking for is a good safe draw stroke. If everybody's got a good safe draw stroke, we're not gonna go through the whole process of how to draw the gun. If you don't have good safe draw strokes, we're gonna have to go through that process. I want you to present the pistol, get a sight picture. You don't need to put your finger on the trigger and then safely recover to the holster, okay? I need, I need, I should have just heard 15 or 16 or 30 people say yes. Yes, yes. yes. Gonna look like this, only me. My finger's straight, it's safe to holster. Understand? Yeah. We're just gonna make sure that you guys are safe coming in and out of the holster. You guys behind them, you're looking for anything unsafe. Fingers are not going in the trigger. I want to audibly hear you say, fingers safe, it's okay to holster on the way back in. There is no world where we need to race to the holster. If you have such crazy circumstances that you should be racing a gun anywhere, it's probably to shoot somebody, not put it away. Yeah? yeah. If the problem is solved, you should be taking time to breathe and slow down. On the whistle, look left and right, just a nice safe draw stroke. and then safely recover to the holster when it's safe to do so. You guys behind them, I want you to keep looking. Our support hand, if you're not clearing a cover garment, your support hand should probably be somewhere around your sternum or navel, because it's a safe spot for it to be. So that draw stroke compresses back in. Finger safe. Finger safe. Finger safe. Gary yeah, Eastridge is as fast as lightning. Safely recover to the holster. I want you to verify your fingers off the trigger. 
Ripping off the trigger, safe poster. Pine tight first. All right, we're gonna we're gonna go through a bit the basic process of this draw stroke because I saw at least ten of you that did not have what we would consider to be efficient, and this is the about the oldest way in the world to teach drawing. It's multiple steps: one, two, three, and those those positions work with our ready positions. So position one, I'll, I'll do this in both directions. Your hands can start from wherever, and I suggest you start from different positions as you're doing this, right? One, see this? One, this is all that's happening. One, I go to the gun. If you're here, this would be one. This would be one. This would be one. If I've got an open cover garment on, Throw the coat open and go to it. Throw the coat open and go to it. Who's shooting concealed? Who's shooting appendix? Who's not shooting appendix that's concealed? Just you? Where are you? On the hip? So one, two, and what we're gonna teach you is having this gun high into your pec, high pectoral index, right? From here, we can shoot. So you're going to, as that gun comes to this position, we don't always teach this because it's a, it's, it's a weird way to do things if it's, if it's out of context, but it will make sense. That gun's gonna come up. This chunk of your arm is gonna be against your breast or pec muscle. You may have to, which you're not gonna do in this draw stroke, drop yourself back, grab the bad guy that's in front of you and fill his body full of bullets if that's what your intention is. So that's why you'd be here. Gary Eastridge is like, don't tell them that. There's culpability based on what you said. Two, three, yeah? Make sense? Yes. So, one, two, three, four. Three, which is what? Compressed. Compressed ready, right? You can shoot from there. Compressed ready. Two, one. One, two, three, four, three, two, one. One, Two, three, three is when your hands are connecting to the gun. Four, three, two, one. And then of course, those numbers are just to make sure we're doing things in sequence. It just comes back to this smooth draw stroke. Where's Mr. Eastridge? Come on up here, Gary Eastridge. So Gary's got a good, efficient draw stroke. Gary, just face that way once and draw so people can see your movements. Face that way once and just draw once. Ready? Uh and then come back to the holster. Face this way. So you don't see anything really moving on him. Watch him this way. Ready up. Ooh, bam, 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 bang, 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 bam. He didn't see much moving, right? Just his arms and the gun came up. Those numbers are just there for mental set points. So one, go to the gun. Support hand comes to the center line of the body or is clearing the cover garment if it's in the appendix position. Two, gun comes to this pec index. Three, I'm connected. So I've got that karate chop where this inside of my hand is connecting or the inside of this finger is connecting with that trigger guard. I've got contact there. I'm not just grabbing my hand. I've got contact. Where's that um, cert gun I, I dropped? It's here. A Couple of you guys are into this business. What's wrong with this picture? Now I have one friend named Eric Camps that's a national level, actually international level grandmaster Ipsic shooter that shoots a stock Glock 17 like this. He would never tell you to do it because he learned the wrong way, but he developed a good strong grip where most of his grip pressure is coming out of this hand and this pinky finger. Because what happens is you do this is all of this meat from this support hand now loses contact with the gun. So in order to get friction, we have to have contact, right? So look if we take this thumb of our master hand and just get it out of the way as we build this grip. Now I can take all of that meaty good goodness of my support hand and make contact with the plastic or metal on your gun. Does that make sense? Yeah, so as you come to, is this too much information? No. So position one, two, three, look at my thumbs kind of out of the way. So as I roll my thumbs forward, I can make all that good meaty contact. A byproduct of this, there's a lot of misunderstandings in everything humans are involved in where we take information and we understand a little bit of it and then we create 
something in our head with the misinformation. You know what I'm talking about? Internet's full of that shit. So this became, oh, well, the whole reason we do this is because then we can point with our thumbs. Well, no, that's not why we do it. That's a byproduct that our thumbs are pointing, but some asshole decided to tell people that this is so you can point. But a byproduct of this is when you're doing it right, your thumbs just kind of are naturally pointing where the bullets are going to go. Your thumbs don't need to impart pressure to the slide. They, people are constantly trying to counter torque and do things. What happens if I, if, if I built a grip where I'm applying counter torque and then I take this hand away and I have to shoot one handed, right? I mean, it, people do this. And what they're really doing is they're compensating for gripping with their support or their dominant hand. So they're like, well, if I push on the gun with my other thumb, my bullets will stop going low left. Of course they will until you shoot one handed, right? Right, right? So our practice is gonna look like this. One, two, three, I've got contact right here and I can fire through all of this. Get a sight picture. When we say get a sight picture, don't just point the gun out there. Be hyper vigilant to see your sight, align it in the dot, or to see your, your dot if you're shooting a red dot and superimpose it on the target. Get a sight picture. Feel what your hands are doing. This is a problem with dry fire. People will message me and they're like, I'm dry, I can't, I've never had training. I don't have uh, the money to, but I'm dry firing. Well, what are you doing? I could go to Dan's jiu-jitsu class one time and be like, I can't really come here a lot, so I'm just gonna do this at home alone. But I don't really know what I'm doing, but I'm gonna roll around on the floor. I can buy golf clubs and just beat holes in the dirt. And I'm practicing. You're not practicing, you're, you're circle jerking, which can be fun, but it leads to nowhere town. We are gonna rep this for about 10 minutes. And the cool thing is if we're really conscientious, really conscientious, we can, we can make this beautiful really quickly. One, your support hand should be near your sternum or clearing the cover garment. If you're clearing the cover garment and you're in the appendix position, I would pop that shirt up all the way to your sternum so it's high away from the gun if you're carrying concealed. So right now, stepping out, just so we're on the same page, support hand is in the center line of your body. It's there to meet that gun as it comes out. The reason we don't have it here is I'm gonna flag myself if that gun comes out in my hands over here, right? So we just have it by the center line of our body. Two, gun comes straight up to that high pick at peck index. Imagine right now Z Durham was in front of you trying to kill you. That guy's two feet away from you. Could you shoot them in their guts or pelvis right now? Would your slide impact your breast or chest? If it would, just so you're aware of where we're going with this later, look down at that. You would cant that slightly outboard. Cant the gun slightly outboard. So turn your wrist to the right for a righty. Look at it. Turn your wrist to the right. Away from you. Look at it. Do it. Turn it to the right. So that you can see, okay, nobody's moving. Turn your wrist to the right so that that slide will travel over your wrist bone away from your chest. Got it? Three, connect your support hand underneath the trigger guard. So your, your support hand fingers should be tight to the trigger guard, yes? Press that gun out, get a sight picture. You should now, if you're doing this right, feel your core start to engage. Maybe you take a little slight bend in the knees. You should be able to draw and fire from any position with your feet, but if you have the ability to put your feet in an advantageous position, you probably want to be standing somewhat like a boxer would. Feet maybe shoulder width apart, maybe slightly wider. If you're a righty, you'd probably have your left foot in front of the right. Maybe you'd have a slight bend in your knee. Three, recover back to your chest. You should be able to fire from here. Two, support hand is nowhere near the muzzle. Now look and verify your fingers off the trigger. Tell yourself it's safe to holster. Recover to the holster. Hands in a ready position. Quick side note. I was just, just watching Tiff put a gun in. Whoever's carrying in the appendix position. Tiffany uh, is the only female, I think, carrying in the appendix. Who's carrying in the appendix? You are too. Do you like your private parts? Do you like your private parts? Do the rest of you that are carrying in the appendix position like your private parts? Okay, no, yeah, no. Pop your pelvis out as you go to reholster. 
and you can look, usually you'll be able to look right into your holster. One, I can see there's nothing in there, but two, look at the orientation of my muzzle. No penis tip getting shot off, penis tip getting shot off. Look at the orientation of my muzzle if I'm just standing normal. My feet, my knees, my thighs, pelvis out, standing straight. Pelvis out, you'll see me a bunch of times over the weekend, I'll even throw my hip out, depending on who's around me. Hey, time to holster. One, two, three, Make sure that that support hand is underneath the thumb of the, of the dominant hand, that the, the meat of your palm of your support hand is making contact to the grip frame and is not on top of your thumb. Four, press out, get a sight picture. Three, two, one. Swap the line, swap the line when the guns are holstered. So context matters, right? Um, Gary, can you please come here? So if, if Gary's right here, and it's just me and Gary in the world, I probably am not gonna stand here and manipulate my gun, right? I'd be like, geez, Gary, get off of me. And I can manipulate my gun here. We've got a firing line here. Guys, that you could step off, thank you, Gary. If you're carrying on the small of your back, I gotta be careful. Yeah, I don't wanna shoot myself, but I also don't wanna be doing this shit, right? Oh, I don't wanna shoot me, I don't care about all these other dudes. I have to, maybe reorient myself and carefully come back to that holster. If I'm here, this is, this is happening. I'll just point at all you and then I'll come into my holster. You have to possibly change the orientation of your muzzle to keep us safe, right? I might have to come in and you might be making movements that seem unnatural. Do you know what they're natural for? Not shooting your training partner. That's kind of a cool thing to come naturally to you. I'm really natural at not killing training partners. Three, four, three, two, one. So if I call a different number, it means you go to that point, right? One, three. So you should be at the compressed ready position. One, man, he went from zero to 100 really quick. Listen up, listen up. Is anybody getting a little um, nervous, adrenalized? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes. All right, coming out. Down range. Down range. Down range. All right, so how many of you felt like adrenaline or anything went up? The rest of you are lying. <laughs> I've, I, I've looked at this under research, all right? Uh, how many guys here we're in special operations, military, or law enforcement. Hands up. I've observed these individuals under stress. Just in visually something coming into a room, okay? Everybody responds to a stressful situation in the exact same manner. Stress physiology does not differentiate between human beings. How fast you can regulate that stress now differentiates you, okay? <laughs> So, my friends that were in special operations know how to regulate themselves very quickly. Meaning, they can go from a high sympathetic arousal state into a very calm, more parasympathetic dominant state. You are as good as the tools that you understand that you have. The easiest and greatest tool you've got for manipulating stress is breathing. Anybody, does everybody know what your autonomic nervous system does? No. It's in charge of your sympathetic and parasympathetic branches of your nervous system. That means survival or rest, all right? But it's not necessarily just survival or rest. It means we, 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 we can fluctuate these things in how we're handling stress. Adrenaline is a response to stress. Adrenaline also happens to be the uh, most medicated over response that we have in the world. Meaning people who are the top 10 medications, three of them have to do with blood pressure. Blood pressure is a result of unregulated adrenaline response <coughs> due to stress. So the fastest way to change that is through breathing. And the reason we were doing nasal breathing this morning was 
because it brings in more parasympathetic tone, which allows you to clearly see more of the picture of what is going on to make a better decision, including hitting a target. Okay? You do not necessarily need to be in a very high sympathetic survival mode when you are in engaging in some of the drills, but it will get there, and that's on purpose. But the tool becomes, when I go from one to four, is that if I'm inhaling, when I actually, am I inhale, if I'm inhaling through my nose as I go from one to four, I have controlled the response in that I've taken my breathing off of my brain stem, which is automatic. I've brought it up into the cortex, which is where I am learning. And I have now ingrained a new learned response in how I'm processing that response. This goes far beyond just understanding what we're doing with oxygen. But it goes into a learning response of how I'm managing stress. Right? Everybody's having, everybody's arousal state is changing in some regard. Very true that it's all varied between every one of you and how much experience you have. It's still happening. But you're still only as good as how well you can manage that stress response in a situation. And so the easy play becomes inhale, exhale as we move through it faster and faster. Find the places where you can inhale and exhale successfully through the process so that you're controlling the stress response. This is, our, this is what differentiates us from every other animal on this planet. We understand we can manipulate stress in order to create an adaptive process. We do that through everything we do, whether we're talking about push-ups and weight training, or whether it is I'm learning a new skill. That is a stress response that requires energy to do something, right? Does that make sense? Yes. All right, so as you work through that in a faster manner, I realize that Nick's going one, three, that you're going to need to breathe a little bit more than that, right? So breathe, but as we move faster through the process, understand, inhale, Exhale. If I'm taking my breathing offline from my, from my brain stem, I've now implemented a very much broader scope for me to learn. Plasticity. Ever heard that word? All right. Plasticity means you are basically just creating more learned activity within the brain. You are plastic till the day you die. Enjoy the process. So, practicing something, practicing something, it matters how you practice it, right? Practice shit, you get really good at. Shit. Yeah. Practice excellence. Excellent. Pretty simple. These little nuances, why Brian's here, these little nuances are what separates pretty good from great. Learning to compartmentalize the mechanical action in your hand and then develop that breathing, it'll get to the point where I've been working on this for a number of years. People will ask me what's wrong because I just am going like walking through the grocery store. I'm not, nothing's wrong. I'm controlling my autonomic whatever thing that Brian talked about in reducing the adrenaline stuff. Duh. But that's where we want to get to. So that when you're in the car and the in the semi truck pulls in front of you like happened 11 times to us on the way here because they just decide to cut in front of you when you're on cruise at 82 and they don't want to get off the cruise at 72 and they just cut in front of you instead of going blah, 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 you go <sighs> or or the opposite of that Downrange. well done oh my god that thing that I trained for is happening I don't want it to happen instantly becomes <sighs> Bop, 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 bop. Understand? That's where we're going. We're going to do this a few more times. Start to incorporate that breathing and, and start to think about the physicality of your body. Is the position that my body is in right now a platform I could fight from? Is it advantageous to winning? If you've never boxed, how would you stand right now if I said to you, the first person to run to the tree line gets a million bucks. Ready? On your mark. You feel what your body did. You squatted a little bit. Your weight came off of your heels and kind of went under the front of your feet. 
you don't need to be as aggressive as a sprinter, but just dropping your weight a little bit, just like this. You know, if you watch Instagram, all the guys that want to shoot super fast, especially from the appendix, this is how you see them start. Slightly bent, slightly bent, shoulders and el elbows are slightly bent because I'm taking out as much movement as possible. Bam, 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 like a cat ready to pounce upon a mouse. Bam, 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 one, two, three. Now look down at your hands. If you take that support hand, the, the left hand for all of you but Brian, and take your palm, look at me right now without pointing your muzzle. Take your palm and your thumb and you drive it forward like this on the gun so that the, is this the radius or the ulna? I always forget. So the radius here and your thumb become a straight line. See this? So as that's on the gun, you're cocking this hand forward. This will make more sense in a bit when we do the block on, on recoil mitigation. Four, press that gun out, get a sight picture. Recover to the holster. My finger is straight, it is safe to holster. Now is a great time to do what? Go through that breathing procedure. One, two, three, four. Recover to the holster, I wanna hear you. What should you be doing right now? If your ass is forward right now, if your pelvis is tossed forward like you're trying to pee, pull your ass back a little bit. Pull your ass back so that your weight comes far, farther into your toes. Stance is important, but it's not nearly as important as you think, but if you develop this habit where your body drops into this good, strong position, it's gonna just be advantageous for you. Recover to the holster. One, four, three, four, Two, that's that high pec index. Does everybody know which eye is their dominant eye? Yes. yes. Does anybody not know which eye is their dominant eye? You all know which eye is your dominant eye? Yes? yes. yes? There's a, a bunch of weird isms downrange in the training world. Downrange. As we already said, wherever there's humans, there's weird shit. And so there's a huge discussion on one eye open, both eye open when you're shooting. And nowadays, I'm starting to hear all kinds of very seasoned people saying, who cares if you can't open both eyes while you shoot? We'll talk about more of that later. But what Paul just brought up is some of you are cross-eye dominant, and what you're doing is you're dragging your head to put it in front of the gun. Who's, who's cross-eye dominant? I am. So if you're cross-eye dominant or... Do you ever shoot with the other hand or with your carbine have to shoot with the other hand? You should be practicing that way. Back to the inner training, training tool here. Instead of me turning my head, which really breaks down my good shooting platform, it bends my spine and just makes things not comfortable, look at this. I'm moving from eye to eye. That's all I gotta do to move from eye to eye. As we're building this platform, ultimately our shooting's gonna get to the point that we can be doing this and moving around all kinds of shit. We're not gonna just stand flat-footed, but ideally, if we are standing flat-footed, just stand up. Don't crouch too much. Don't turn your head around. Stand erect, your face flat to the target or to the bad guy. Not, we're not turtling. Here's another ism where people just took something because this is good, now this is gooder. Right? No, it's not. That's not an advantageous way to shoot. Just stand up and bring the gun to your eye. Make sense? Yes. It's a hard habit to break. I love Chicago. It's a hard habit to break. Huh? Such a good song. That was a great song. If you guys don't know how to find your dominant eye or you're showing this to somebody, super simple. Find a point on the target in front of you. One of these circles. Make a small triangle that's about maybe as big as a penny and look through that and look at the thing on the target that you chose. Now slowly retract that to your face. Slowly come back while still looking at that object. You will be looking through your dominant eye right now. Questions? Let's do this. Gun stay holstered, fall back, slug a bottle of water. Hydration is a game you want to stay far ahead of. We're at Langdon Tactical Technologies today. 
Oh, hey guys. Hi, Mickey. What's up, Mickey? What are you guys up to today in here? We are, right now, we're trying to figure out what parts, uh, spare parts we need to order. Um, On top and, of MP3 guns. And Jonah is putting together MP3 guns. What's an, what's an MP3 gun? That means that's one of your guns with all the internals all coated. All the metal parts except for the frame, slide, and barrel are coated in nickel Teflon MP3. Is it worth it? It is totally worth it. It's so nice. <laughs> <laughs> it is so nice. And it only gets better with time. Does it? it? It wears into a better... You're okay. I could have got a shot of you doing packaging. 